Now, many people think that Jesus only had male disciples. They read about, you know, Peter, John, James, and Thomas, Judas, and all the rest. Twelve males, no female listed amongst them. And from that, they get the idea that Jesus only had um, male disciples. It's not true. A careful reading of the scriptures, not just um, the Gospels, the four Gospels, but also Paul's writings and so on in the New Testament, it shows us that many, many women were listed as being workers in the gospel. Paul commended many of them in his letters for their service and their labor with him in the gospel. And Jesus himself had um, disciples who were women. So we shouldn't just think it's, it's, it's just for men. It never was the case with Jesus and it shouldn't be with us today. There was a woman, um, one day Jesus was, was in, in a place up north of the country of Israel called Galilee. And one of the towns there was a, a, a town called Nain. And he was invited to the house of a Pharisee. And this Pharisee, his name was Simon. And so Jesus was there for the meal with the Pharisee. And while he was there, this woman came in. This woman that we might call of ill repute. She came in emotionally because she wanted to be at the feet of the Messiah, of Jesus. And she was crying. And she was using her tears to wash his feet and then drying his feet with her hair. And then she opened a bot bottle of perfume and anointed his feet. Now she was doing this from the abundance of her heart, with passion, with zeal, with emotion. But this was a shock and horror thing for the guest, for the, the host. Because he was a Pharisee. And how dare this woman come in like this? I mean, w women were not supposed to be doing something like that. What she was doing was, to him, a scandalous act. The only people that washed people's feet were slaves. And the wife, so if you come in, in my house and your feet is dirty, my wife or children may wash your feet or my, my slave wash your feet. No, nobody else would, would wash their feet. This woman was doing this. She's not supposed to do that. Not only that, she was a woman of ill repute. She was a dodgy character. She was, quote, a sinner because of her life. Now, many say that this woman was a prostitute. We don't exactly know, but she wasn't one of these people that's honored in society. Eh? So this Pharisee thought, this man who is supposed to be the prophet that Moses spoke about a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you like unto me and him shall you hear so Moses was talking about that Messiah and over 300 prophecies about that Messiah in the Old Testament and here is the Messiah now and he doesn't know the lifestyle of this woman he doesn't know that she's a sinner he doesn't know what she's done can this be the Messiah? Can this be the prophet that Moses spoke about? And look at this disgraceful thing that she's doing. See, woman's hair often is considered her beauty and so on. And the, the Jewish women are supposed to cover it up. The pious women would wear their head covered. They wouldn't go out the house without hair covered. And the, and the, the super pious women, they even have the hair covered at home, in the house. That's their custom, I won't comment, but that's how they were. And here was this woman, no head covering. And she's using her hair. Now, the hair was something provocative in that time. And she was using that to wash, to dry his feet. I mean, it's t today it's the equivalent of a woman showing her cleavage. And men would look and it's, you know, it's something provocative. This woman, just by displaying her hair and using it to, to dry his feet, was a very provocative act. How dare she do this in this religious man's house, the Pharisee's house? And so he was horrified that she was doing this. But Jesus didn't rebuke her. He accepted her. Now, we may look at people and despise them because of what they've done, their, their social status, their caste, or their tribe, 
may not be as you know important as ours in the hierarchy of things. So we look at people from for different you know, natural, carnal way through racism, through different things. And we think we're better than them. We walk in pride, think we're better than this one, better than that one, and so on. Jesus was not like that. Those who people thought were the outcasts, the downtrodden, the people that we don't want to associate with, we don't want to mix with them. Jesus would. So should we. Because the gospel is to every man, regardless of their social status, or their background, or the tribe where they come from, or the caste that they're from, or any other thing, their ethnic group or anything. No. Jesus accepts us all. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have been born in sin and been shapen in iniquity. In sin did all our mothers conceive us. We're not better than anybody else. We're all under sin. We all need a saviour. So if we were born in the palace, in the high places of society, you know, in the top of government, in the elite circles of this world, or in the middle classes, or in the lower classes, or at the bottom of the ladder in society, makes no difference. We're still all in sin. And it's only the blood of Jesus that can cleanse us from that sin. It's only by accepting Jesus can we find life and salvation. So whatever background we are, shouldn't make us want to look down upon somebody and think we're really better than them. They're beneath us. That is not God's way. And that shouldn't be our ways. That's the way of the world because they don't know any better. Their heart is not regenerated. They're not saved. So they will do these things and say these things and have these attitudes. The believer, the Christian, shouldn't have these attitudes. If we had it before, they have to be rooted out of us. Because we ought to love everybody as Christ loves everybody. The Bible says God is love. And so if God is in us, we must have that same love. And one of the fruits of the Spirit listed is love. We must have that to all men. No matter who they are or what they've done. Now we may not like them or they've done things we find horrific and disgusting and so on and so on. But at the end of it, they're still a soul. Even the man possessed by evil spirits is still a soul. Wanting to be free but trapped the gospel is to everyone. The Lord commands all men everywhere to repent. And so we with the gospel, we with Jesus Christ, must go and tell the world that Jesus saves, whoever they are. We don't choose people and think, you know, they will accept Christ, so we'll tell them, but that one over there, I don't think so, and we ignore them. No, that's not the gospel. That's not the gospel way. That's not the Christ way. And all our lifetime, all we have to do is go Christ's way. He is the best way.